In the 2013 music video for the song 3005, Childish Gambino is seen riding a carnival Ferris wheel with a stuffed teddy bear. The bear gets more and more beat up as the video progresses, and by the end, a large fire surrounds the wheel, the bear is completely destroyed, and Gambino mysteriously disappears. This video now has over 100 million views on YouTube alone, but despite its popularity, most of its arcane symbols and references are still very much a mystery. That is, until today. I'm Cole Kushner, host of the music analysis podcast Dissect, which is currently breaking down Childish Gambino's Because the Internet over 13 episodes. Today, in our very first video analysis, we're dissecting the cryptic visuals of 3005. 3005 is part of Donald Glover's larger mixed media world known as Because the Internet. And like all things BTI, we have to view the song and video within the context of this world for a complete understanding. Composed of interconnected music, film, a screenplay, performance art, hidden web content, and more, Because the Internet explores finding meaningful connection and growth in the age of the internet. At the center of the world's five-act narrative is a surreal composite of Donald Glover, his rap alias Childish Gambino, and a protagonist simply named The Boy. The Boy is a rich, 20-something internet troll who has an existential crisis after realizing his life so far has been meaningless, a monotonous loop of partying and insubstantial relationships. We hear these sentiments expressed in 3005's verses. Gambino describes his party lifestyle and how he feels lonely despite having a house full of homies. Verse 2 gets even more confessional, as he admits his friends are using him for his money, says he's lost hope of a happy ending, and concludes that we're all just ticking time bombs, alluding to our inevitable deaths. These thoughts about mortality, combined with his feelings of alienation, confirm what the boy is feeling, existential loneliness. At the time of BTI's creation, Glover was heavily into existential philosophy and was constantly seen carrying this book about existential philosophers. Even in interviews, Glover was quick to mitigate people's assumptions that 3005 was simply a love song. So 3005, what's it about? It's funny because I've been reading comments and everybody's like, it's a love song, obviously. Like, I was like, it's not a, it's like one of the sadder, like, I feel like songs not about any, it's just about like, it's kind of an existential thing. Like, it's just like, kind of like, I don't really, like, I just don't want to be, I'm really scared of being alone. Like, I'm really scared of like, what is this supposed to be? The Hook of 3005 interrogates what society often prescribes as an antidote to existential loneliness, committing ourselves to a single person forever through marriage. The Hook's lyrics actually resemble wedding vows, and in the screenplay that accompanies the album, 3005 scores a scene of the boy and his crew watching a wedding. While his friends express cynicism about marriage, the boy is more open-minded, curious whether it could cure his loneliness. In this same scene, one of his friends makes what seems to be a passing reference to the 90s sitcom Boy Meets World. But in the world of BTI, these kinds of passing references almost always direct us to another area of the world for further exploration. In BTI's short film Clapping for the Wrong Reasons, there's a scene that stars Danielle Fischel, who famously played Topanga on Boy Meets World. Uncoincidentally, this scene also centers around a wedding, albeit through Fischel's recurring dream. It had the most, like, strangely recurring dreams over the last week and uh it's like of my wedding but nothing is going right everything's a disaster amidst her own personal crisis Fischl goes on to explain how everyone is ready for the wedding but her and that she's secretly a few weeks pregnant and smoking a cigarette so i tell my mom mom you don't know this but i'm three or four weeks pregnant she says not put out the cigarette she says well maybe you should go get in your wedding dress finding out that her daughter is pregnant and smoking Fischl's mother simply tells her to put her wedding dress on. That is, in the face of the existential threat of death and decay, the fact that we're all just ticking time bombs, she offers up the very prescription that 3005 interrogates, committing to a single person forever. When we key in on this idea of forever in relation to 3005, we start to see it everywhere. Take the song title itself. 3005 is a year so far away, it might as well be forever and the middle two numbers, 0, 0, resemble an infinity symbol, the symbol for forever. And when we add up the outer two numbers, 3 and 5, or even 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 5, we get 8, itself a vertical infinity symbol. Musically, we actually find an allusion to forever in the song's chord progression that loops throughout the entire song. It begins with a C-sharp minor 7, moves up to a D major 7, 
up again to an F sharp minor, then back down to the D major 7, and finally returns to the first chord, C sharp minor 7. This chord progression is a palindrome, something that reads the same backwards as it does forward. A palindrome is essentially a self-contained loop, and when divided down the center, its two sides create a perfect mirror image. And you know what else is palindromic in shape? Loops or cycles are one of the biggest recurring motifs found throughout the world of BTI. You might remember the video for the song Sweatpants, where the boy makes his way through a diner over and over again, repeating the same actions as everyone else begins looking like him. A similar looping structure is used in the video for 3005, as the video is essentially three nearly identical rotations or cycles around a ferris wheel. The wheel itself is circular as well, something that rotates around and around endlessly. You're continuously moving, but you're not actually going anywhere. We think first of the boy's life, which he's recognized as a continuous loop of partying and selfish excess. He's stuck on the wheel, stuck in adolescence, and he needs to grow up. This is one reason his name is simply The Boy, and the candy-colored lights of the Ferris wheel in the carnival setting help convey this aura of adolescence. Then there's the teddy bear sitting next to Gambino or The Boy. The symbolism here is infinite. Most immediately, the bear represents youth and innocence, something that's eventually destroyed in adulthood when we experience the unforgiving nature of life and become aware of our mortality, which is reflected in the bear's deterioration over time. And then there's the bear's pilot hat, which ties into Donald Glover using costuming as a part of his performance art during this time. In all interviews and public appearances, Glover wore the same outfit as the boy, including this same style hat. The hat itself is most likely referencing Holden Caulfield's hat in the classic 1951 novel, The Catcher in the Rye. Holden Caulfield and the boy carry many similarities beside the hat, as both well-to-do young men grapple with existential angst while realizing everyone around them is a phony. At one point in Catcher in the Rye, Holden Caulfield laments that, quote, people always clap for the wrong reasons. This is the inspiration for the title of the aforementioned short film, Clapping for the Wrong Reasons. We're reminded of how Glover would comment in interviews that people were misinterpreting 3005 as a love song. It seems Glover may have thought people were clapping for the wrong reasons about 3005. Finally, a teddy bear is an object of comfort, something children are given to cuddle when alone and scared in bed. In the context of a carnival, a large stuffed teddy bear is a classic prize, tied to the idea of a date at a fair and trying to win a gift for a special someone. In this way, the bear is a stand-in for a relationship, or more specifically, marriage, our commitment to forever with a single person, society's antidote to existential loneliness, the adult version of the teddy bear we cuddle when we're alone and scared. When we understand this relationship between the boy and the bear, a few more layers of the Ferris wheel symbolism reveal themselves. First, a Ferris wheel is a common setting for romance, often seen in films like The Notebook and Love, Simon. But more importantly, we start to recognize the Ferris wheel as a larger metaphor for our time on Earth. The boy and the bear have chosen to sit with each other on their life's ride. At first, the outside world is a fun zone, a carnival full of magic and wonder, not unlike our experience of the world as a child. But as time passes, the video reveals that the outside world is burning, symbolic of our ever-impending death. We're all just taking time bobs, as Gambino points out, and the bear's decay over the course of the video seems to represent both the boy's loss of innocence and the fact that we're constantly aging, constantly dying. This latter point is conveyed by the other passengers on the Ferris wheel. In the first loop cycle, we see a young couple, likely in their 20s. In the second cycle, they're gray-haired, clearly decades older. And the third time around, they're gone completely. This reveals that these loops around the Ferris wheel are indicative of the passage of time, coupled with the impending death represented by the fire. Sooner or later, our ride is over. And this brings us to the end of the video. Gambino is gone and the teddy bear is completely destroyed. Despite the fact that we choose to marry, someone almost always dies first, and there's no getting around the fact that we will all die alone. This is not to say marriage has no value, but we shouldn't expect it to cure existential loneliness. This deeper loneliness must be grappled with on the individual level. We're all alone in the end, so it's good. Wow. <laughs> it's, that's the way it has to be. Really? Yeah, I think so. I learned last year the most important thing, and that is like, you know, the only love that's reciprocal is love of self. 
you really have to like yourself. That's the thing. And that's the only thing. You can't rely on other people. That's whack. It's so whack to be like, please fill in these holes in me that like, I don't think I'm strong enough. Like, that's whack. And it's here that we can finally unlock the most compelling symbolic function of the Ferris wheel. Throughout the video, the main visual focus stays on the single cabin with Gambino and his bear. The romantic connotations of the Ferris wheel and the teddy bear as a classic carnival prize imply a surface level focus on romance, a single partner to ride with as the purpose of the whole thing. But focus too much on a single cabin or connection, and we miss the larger construction of the Ferris wheel as a whole. Looking at the entire ride, we realize that each cabin is separate but connected via the Ferris wheel center. Despite how alone we may sometimes feel in our individual cabins, we're all on the same ride, all interconnected, living and sharing these times together. But if we focus too much on one pair, one cabin, or just the ride itself, we lose focus of everything going on around the fun. Be it global warming, warfare, police brutality, or simply the existential threat of our inevitable death, the world's dangers are unrelenting and ever-present. And the Ferris wheel makes plain that the burning world is seen. It's an exposed ride, where part of the experience is looking around at the sights. In today's information age, we're not unaware of the world's issues, but we're often content to enjoy a connection or two we've made, sit back, and coast, all the while knowing parts of the world are burning. If we focus on Gambino and his teddy bear, sure, this is a fun little video, but we fail to make other connections, fail to see what's going on everywhere else. You might actually remember this very technique being used as the basis of This Is America, where our focus on Gambino's song and dance distract us from the chaos ensuing behind him. The choice Glover seems to lay out in both videos is the same. Like the boy before his crisis, you can take the blue pill and selfishly indulge, concern yourself with only your Ferris wheel cabin, the song and dance, blind to the realities of the world and our larger purpose here. Or you can take the red pill and see the world holistically, the good and the bad, the beauty and the chaos, and realize that we're all on this ride together, that we need to help each other and act with the connections between us as our unifying purpose in order to face the existential threats of the world together. <laughs>